In this video, I'll use the mean value theorem to show that the antiderivative of zero has to be a constant, and that any two antiderivatives of the same function have to differ by a constant. In a previous video, I stated the fact that if f of x is one antiderivative of a function little f of x, then any other antiderivative of that same function can be written in the form capital F of x plus c for some constant c. In other words, any two antiderivatives of the same function have to differ by a constant. To prove this fact, let's first note that if the derivative of a function, g prime of x, is equal to zero on an interval, then the original function, g of x, must equal c for some constant c. This statement follows from the mean value theorem because the mean value theorem tells us that for any x1 and x2 in our interval, the average rate of change between x1 and x2 is equal to the derivative at some number x3 in between x1 and x2. But by assumption, g prime is zero everywhere on the interval, so g prime of x3 must be equal to zero. This means that our numerator, g of x2 minus g of x1 has to equal 0. In other words, g of x2 is equal to g of x1, but that's true for any x1 and x2, so all the values of g are equal, and g must be a constant. The second observation that I want to make is that if g1 and g2 are two functions which have the same derivative, then g1 of x must equal g2 of x plus c for some constant c. This statement follows from the previous statement because if g1 prime of x is equal to g2 prime of x, then g1 prime of x minus g2 prime of x must equal 0. But that means if I look at the function g1 of x minus g2 of x and take its derivative, that has to equal zero, since the derivative of the difference is the difference of the derivatives. Now our previous statement tells us that if the derivative of a function is zero, the function must be a constant, and therefore g1 of x minus g2 of x equals c for some constant c, which means that g1 of x is equal to g2 of x plus c, which is what we wanted to prove. So we've proved that any two functions with the same derivative have to differ by a constant. Or in other words, if capital F of x is one antiderivative of a function, then any other antiderivative must be of the form capital F of x plus c. This concludes the proof that any two antiderivatives of a particular function must differ by a constant.